One in four adults have some sort of chronic pain, whether it's the shoulder, the lower back, knees, neck. Regardless, if you injure yourself in swimming, it's going to keep you out of the water and that can feel extremely discouraging. So what I wanna do in this video is I wanna share with you a few different ways that you can actually prevent injuries from happening in the first place. And if you're working through an injury, I'm gonna share with you a few pro tips so you can get back in the water. First, I wanna tell you a little bit about my own injury. Last winter, I was playing ice hockey and we played for about 90 minutes. I didn't fall, no one hit me. It was just a good old time with the boys playing a little ice hockey. A few days later, I became stiff, I was in pain, and I had a tingle running down my legs. And I tried to brush it off, but I couldn't swim, I couldn't lift weights, and even leaning over hurt so much. And because I was in bed for the next two months, I lost 20 pounds of muscle, and I was out of the water, and I was really frustrated. And the reason I'm telling you this is because I'm sure you've been there before too. You get injured, you feel defeated, but you have to stay patient. Now the road to recovery took almost a year and I'm still not 100%. But I know if I stick with the principles I'm gonna share with you in this video, I'll dramatically reduce the chance of this happening again, and I'll know how to better deal with an injury in the future. So first up, we need to understand why injuries happen in the first place. Now I have a few reasons listed out, and we're gonna go through them one by one. The first is simply increasing your volume, frequency, or intensity too fast. It could be one of those things, or all of them. You could be swimming more volume, you could be adding an additional workout, and eventually something just gives in your body. Now I like to follow the 10% rule when it comes to increasing your volume. This will drastically reduce your chance of injury. And the way it works is, whatever volume you do in a week, this applies not just for swimming, but it could be, apply for running or weightlifting, you can only increase that volume by 10% the following week. So for example, if you swim 2,000 meters five times per week, 10,000 meters. The next week, you really shouldn't swim more than 11,000 meters, and then 12,000 the week after. And eventually, you might be able to get to 20,000 meters in a week, but if you skip from 10,000 meters to 20,000 meters, you're just asking for failure. Because eventually, something will give because your body hasn't developed that quickly. Another way this happens is the comeback after a long break. Maybe you were an elite level swimmer, you're, you're making a comeback, you used to swim 50,000 meters per week, but for the last five years you've done nothing. So to think that you can come back quickly and sort of bounce back, right, you don't forget how to ride a bike, you just hop back on and you go. No, 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 you might not forget how to swim, but your body isn't conditioned the way it was, you've aged, other things have happened in your life, so if you come back too quick and you increase your volume, frequency, and intensity, this is one of the main reasons how injuries happen. So keep that in mind, and you'll increase the likelihood that it won't happen. Now another area is adding a new activity. This is basically what I did, right? I don't play ice hockey. The last time I ice skated was before COVID, like 2018 or 2019. So I took something on that was new in four years. And this can be applied to adding new strokes to your routine. So for example, if you go from not swimming any breaststroke to all of a sudden swimming a lot of breaststroke, the 10% rule still applies. So you can actually increase your chance of injury just by doing a new activity. You could be adding new equipment. Maybe you got a new toy, you got some new paddles, you got some new fins. You gotta build into it. Another area is this imbalance in strength. What happens as swimmers, as athletes, you can actually overdevelop certain muscle groups because of swimming, because of the way that you swim, your technique. We'll talk about that later. You can also have underdeveloped parts of your body relative to the overdeveloped. So a lot of swimmers might have a lot of strength here in the front of the shoulder, maybe in the pectoral area, and on the back, there's some missing muscle, it's not balanced. Now one of the fastest ways that you can reduce your chance of injury is just focusing on technique. If you have improper technique, you're gonna feel it on day one because the fatigue that you have when you swim only gets amplified, meaning as you swim, you get more tired more quickly, your technique falls apart. When your technique is not balanced, you can increase the amount of stress that you're putting on your body. I even have in my book, I have an entire chapter just on injury prevention as it relates to technique. Check it out, link down below. And it's important to remember that it's not just one of these things, it's all of them put together. So let's talk about this last one here, then we're gonna talk about how you can actually 
pre and post rehab so this never happens to you. Or if it does happen to you, you know what to do about it. Not listening to your body is how you can create injuries. So you have to be able to discern between pain and discomfort. Discomfort is that feeling where you just, you just wanna stop. You're tired, you feel fatigued, you're out of breath. There may not be any pain, and in that case, you need to push yourself harder. Don't be lazy. When it comes to pain, this is a specific kind of feeling that your brain is telling you, you know what, something is wrong. We are not in discomfort anymore. Maybe you never reach discomfort, you have immediate pain, and that's not good. And over time, you start to develop when you have these feelings of pain versus discomfort. And if you continue to have these feelings of pain and you brush it off like like I did with my back, then it's never gonna go away and it's actually going to get worse. So it's really important that you pay attention to these things. You wanna pay attention to your recovery. It needs to be on point and you have to do it consistently. And finally, don't let your ego get the best of you. If you're in the weight room and you see someone lift a lot of weight, don't walk over there and think that you can lift the same weight. If you see someone do something really cool in the water just because you're a swimmer, doesn't mean you can do the same thing. So don't let your ego get the best of you. Now, swimming is great because for the most part, it's a relatively low impact sport, but you still have to push off the wall and even just getting into the pool can be a hassle, but not with Master Spas, today's video sponsor. I'm currently sitting in the Michael Phelps Signature Momentum Swim Spa. This model has an adjustable current that is great for all levels. You can focus on your technique, swim all four strokes, and you can do it all from the comfort of your own house. I love how easy it is to adjust the speed and swim at my own pace. I can go from really slow all the way up to sub one minute per 100 meters, which is absolutely flying. Now I've been in a few different models and what I love about the Master Spa's signature momentum is how it gives you a really good workout and it also doubles as a spa. It combines the benefits of swimming with a therapy of a hot tub. You have to give it a try, so head over to masterspas.com forward slash myswimpro to get $1,000 off a swim spa or $500 off a hot tub. On the board, I have three different areas to focus on when it comes to this pre-post injury. Like I mentioned, a lot of people have chronic pain or you will experience some injury at some point in your life. So whether it's already happened or you just never want it to happen, these are some things we need to pay attention to. The first area is your shoulders. Now when we swim, whether we're doing freestyle or any other stroke, we are doing an insane amount of repetition. I mean, literally in my life, I have already taken millions of arm strokes Yes, millions of arm strokes in every single stroke discipline. It's kind of mind blowing to think how many times your arms are moving. And what happens is, just like a car, it starts to break down. You gotta make sure you're oiling those joints. So instead of actually applying real oil, the way that you can do that when it comes to protecting your shoulders so they can last tens of millions or hundreds of millions of arm strokes are a few different exercises I have here. The first is internal and external rotations. These are really focused on strengthening your rotator cuff and having having good stability in the shoulder area. So that way, as you fatigue, you build this endurance. So that way you're more likely to have a solid foundation in your shoulder. So you're less likely to injure it. Another exercise I love doing are scapular push-ups. This is basically where you're in a plank position or you're, you could be on your hands and you're just gonna lift your body up and down, really engaging the scapula. This is on your back. And like I mentioned earlier, you wanna make sure your body's really balanced. You don't wanna have very strong pectoral muscles and a strong chest but nothing on the back. And you can already tell right now, based on how you're watching this video, are you hunched over right now? Or are you sitting with a good posture? A lot of these exercises are actually gonna help you improve your posture. Another area is strengthening your back. Now, when you strengthen your back, what you're trying to do is you're trying to create that balance. You wanna have stability, and there's a lot of different ways you can do this. Pull-ups, rows, back flies, all of these things are very, very important. The next area you have to focus on is developing your core strength. I mentioned earlier, you might have a six pack, you might feel like you have a strong core, but if you're not balanced from a 360 degree perspective, that's not really gonna work out for you. You have to make sure you have strength, stability, and endurance. So you might be really good in endurance, but maybe you don't have enough strength, you don't have enough stability. You have to work on all of these. And the core can really be split into a few different dimensions. If we think about the core just from the front, we have your abs, then you have your hip flexors, and you have your quads. And on the back side, it's important to rehearse and strengthen all of these. You have your lower back, your glutes, and your hamstrings. And for me, when I hurt my back, the reason that happened is because I had this imbalance that we talked about earlier. I was much stronger 
stronger in the front of my core. Those were overdeveloped from swimming and strength training and just doing a lot of planks and sit-ups and push-ups and whatever. And I wasn't doing enough alternating supermans cat cow tilts, things to strengthen my lower back glutes and hamstrings. Very, very important. And the third way here is this total body awareness. This really puts it all together. Remember our 10% per week rule? This is critical. You have to have a balanced strength program. I mentioned the reason I hurt my back is because I wasn't very balanced. And to this day, I naturally develop more strength on the front of my core. Some people naturally develop strength in their pectorials and they have to work on their back. We all have these natural inclinations to how our bodies are built, the way that we respond to different training. So it's so important that you have a balanced strength training program. And then you have to have a balanced swim program. Because if you're just randomly doing all this swimming, if you're trying to do a lot of breaststroke and then you throw in some backstroke, yo, I got a fair pair of fins. Now I'm gonna throw my fins on my paddles, my snorkel. How do I know what to do? And that's exactly why I developed the My Swim Pro app. So you don't have to think about anything. You just tell the app your goals and it's like a personal coach right there on your wrist. So make sure you check it out for iPhone and Android and get a personalized swim training program designed just for you. Now, if you enjoyed this video, let me know down below what questions you have in the comments. And if you wanna see what happened to my body when I swam for 1,000 days, check out this video over here. I'll see you over there and happy swimming.